Hey there everybody and welcome back to another open shading language tutorial. This is part three. If you haven't seen part one and two, go back because it's not going to make sense unless you've seen the previous parts. Each one builds on itself. So uh, what we did in the last part is we made a custom math node in some sense. Uh, the code is very simple and by the way, uh, nobody commented on this but I just thought I should make the text bigger so you can see what the fuck I'm writing. We made a addition shader. What it is, is it's a shader. I called it addition. It takes two float inputs. So again, this is what we did last time. A and B initialized to zero. You can see those right here. And I'm gonna output a number C uh, initialized to zero. And for the code, C is equal to A plus B. So in other words, give an A, give a B, and C is gonna output their uh, sum. So what does this look like? You increase A, it increases. You increase B, it further increases, right? So any contribution makes sense. But uh, the functions we're gonna be doing in the future are gonna be, or the operations are gonna be much more complicated than just adding. It could be multiplying by two, then taking a logarithm, and all of that is an assigned function, et cetera. And that's kind of annoying to write each time. So instead of addition, let me turn this into a function. And I'll show you how to do that in open shading language. It's a very basic concept. So uh, C is now equal to the function of A and B, okay? We haven't defined what that means yet, uh, but I'm saying there's some function that we're gonna make. It takes two inputs, A and B, in these case, they're uh, numbers, and it's gonna do some operation on them, and that's gonna be C. So to define what this function is, we're gonna write it up here, before the shader, because if the shader calls this function, we need to define what that function is first. So I'm gonna write, and I'll explain this in a second, I'm gonna write float function and then parentheses, curly braces. What I'm saying is I'm defining function and I'm saying that it's gonna return a number. So if this was a color, I'd say color function. We're gonna take an input A and B and we're gonna do something, in this case, Adam, and return a float, a number. And just like before with the shader, you have your parentheses for your parameters, your curly braces for your code. So I'm just gonna do this. So for the parentheses, the parameters that this takes in, uh, what does our function take in? Well, it takes in two numbers, right, A and B. So I'm going to write float. It's going to take in a number. Uh, let's call it first. It doesn't really matter what it's called. Um, and we're going to do comma. In this case, we don't need to initialize it uh, because it's not going in our node. It's just a function. And we're going to make a float second. And uh, these are our two parameters. So our function takes in first and second, which are numbers. In this case, they're going to be A and B. For the uh, code of the function, we need to return, and you're gonna see this is highlighted in red because this is a coding term. We are gonna return first plus second, semicolon, always a semicolon. So how do we read this? We made a function that's gonna return a number, a float. It takes in two parameters. Those are gonna be two numbers called first and second in this case, and we are gonna return their sum. So we've defined this function. Now in the shader, we're saying initialize this with two numbers and output C, uh, the function of A and B, okay? So now if we run this again, you can see that it's actually compiled and the code is working. It's doing essentially the same thing, but um, it's inside a function. And there's no reason we can't like nest these inside each other. So maybe I can do this as a function of a function. What does this mean? I'm taking the sum of the sum with b. So in other words, this is a plus 2b, if you think about it. It's a plus b plus b, okay? Uh, but you can see how it's getting more and more complicated. So now I'm gonna recompile the code. Uh, if we add a, you can see it's getting brighter, but if we increase b, it's getting brighter twice as fast. So let's see, this is one, that's what that looks like. And this is 0.5, it's the same brightness uh, because uh, we multiplied by two. So you can see how we have nested uh, functions. And we can also make another function called second function. So I'm just showing you how easy this is to do. Uh, second function is gonna be their subtraction. And let's say we have uh, the second function of the function would be, I know it's getting complicated, it's kind of recursive. But we're saying uh, take a plus b, minus b. In other words, this should be equal to a. So let's see what this looks like. So it doesn't seem to matter, whoops, it doesn't seem to matter what b is equal to, 
but it's only a that matters because it's a plus b minus b which is equal to a so you can see how it gets pretty complicated here you could also write the sine of b or whatever but the key idea here is we define our functions and then we do the shader which calls the functions so again the key takeaway is we say what does this return a number in this case a float we give the parameters we give the code and that's the essence of it so that is functions in open shading language and the goal of this tutorial series is to build complicated functions that do certain tasks so uh, that is it for open shading language number three and as always at the end of these tutorials i like to promote my patreon but don't leave yet let me try to convince you We'll see, we'll see if I can do it. So there's a link in the description for something called Patreon, and that is where you can fund this channel and Default Cube. These tutorials would not exist without Patreon. It's directly your contributions that let me make these tutorials for free. No Patreon, no tutorials. Luckily, there's 600 some people that are currently funding this channel, uh, which I love. It lets me know that people value what I do and they want more of it. And you, if you join Patreon, don't necessarily think of it as a donation although you could because you also get stuff in return you get early access to tutorials so you could have seen this part early you get blend files you get exclusive tutorials i made a couple and i've made years worth of blend files at this point i've been doing this since 2018 or 2019 so uh, if you value what i do here and you want to contribute even a dollar would be amazing uh, patreon is the place to do that hopefully i've convinced a couple of you so Thank you for listening, and I will see you in Open Shading Language Part 4, where I think we're going to start talking about coordinate systems. We'll see. Maybe we'll talk about vectors. Bye.